This demonstration is really more of a lab activity that I do with my students, and I wanted to show you the technique uh, as we work with Boyle's Law. Gas laws are a really fun part of teaching chemistry because there are so many excellent labs that we can do with that process. The Boyle's Law Lab I have seen done a variety of ways. I have data collection equipment that has uh, computer and other types of access material, but I actually prefer the lab that I'm going to show you today because of its simplicity and the fact that students very quickly understand and visualize what's happening. There are times when it's important to get very, very accurate data, but there are times that I think that all of the equipment and the technology that we use interferes with that process, and the students focus on the process instead of the concept that we're trying to teach. So we're going to take a look at a very simple Boyle's Law activity. It uses the regular thin stem barrel pipettes that most of you will have in your labs, and it also uses the typical screw clamp that you probably have. And the pinch clamps won't work. You need these types of screw clamps. What we're going to do is we're going to fill the thin stem barrel pipette completely filled with water that's got a little bit of food coloring in it. No matter how many times you stick the barrel pipette in here and squeeze it, and no matter how hard you squeeze it, it will never completely fill with liquid. So what we have to do is we have to fill it the best we can then if you will tip the barrel pipette up, keep the stem in the jar, squeeze it to release the liquid, and then fill in that direction, now we have a bulb that is completely filled with liquid. Since we're studying Boyle's Law, we're studying the relationship between the pressures and the volumes of gases. Now we are not directly going to measure volume today. We're going to measure length because length and volume will be proportional. If it's important to you to measure actual volume, you can measure the diameter of the thin stem pipette, and then you can do a volume calculation. But as long as we understand that the diameter of this barrel pipette remains constant, and therefore volume and length are proportional, that's the concept we're trying to get. Once the barrel pipette is completely filled with liquid, we're going to very slowly slowly release several drops, about five or six, three, four, five, six, and the trick then is to slowly, slowly release the bulb, not like we would typically do, but slowly release the bulb. Because what we need to have happen is we need the, the bulb of the pipette completely filled with liquid, no air bubbles in there, and a little bit of liquid into the stem, so that way we have this constant volume that we're working with here. Now, I'll take the screw clamp, and we're going to clamp off the end of this pipette. And it needs to be very, 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 very tight. And then when we have this set up, we can test it. If we put pressure on the bulb, the liquid should move. Boyle's Law, pressure-volume relationships, pressure goes up, volume goes down, and then when I slowly release on the bulb, the liquid should come back. A common problem that students make is that they are not patient working with filling this bulb. They'll fill it quickly, they'll bounce it around, and what we will have is we'll have a column that will have many, many different broken pieces, and there will be droplets similar to this one so that we've got multiple little drops and multiple air spaces, and that won't work for us. So what we need to do is have a continuous air column. Another common mistake that students make with working with this lab is that they focus on the movement of the liquid, and you have to constantly remind them we're working with gas laws. So we want to be studying the air, the gas that is in there, which is the uncolored part of the process. What we'll do now is to place this bulb such that we can take our measurements. Are we lined up so that we can see that okay? And we'll start off with no books on here, and with no books, I have a, a reading on here that is going to be about, um, let me flip this around actually. I did that backwards, and we'll make that go the proper direction so we can read it. We're going to call that 95, excuse me, about 85 millimeters in length. 
So with no books, we're going to record a length of 85 millimeters. Now, we're going to take textbooks. And what I tell students to do is that every student is responsible for bringing three hardback textbooks to class. And they'll tell me, Mr. Long, I'm sorry, I don't have classes that have three books in my classes. I say, fine, you have friends that have books. Everybody brings three books to class. And it doesn't matter what the books are, your math book, your English book, your history book, just as long as they're hardback books. I don't want a little thin paperback book that they might be reading for a literature class, but a hardback book. And you would say, there's no way that you're going to get consistent data since the books aren't the same size and weight, but to two significant figures, it will do what we need. So I'm going to carefully lay this book on the bulb, and as the pressure on the bulb increases, we see the liquid moving, and we see the air that has compressed in there. Pressure goes up, volume goes down. With one book, we're going to call this about 48 millimeters. We'll place a second book on that. And again, laying it on carefully, because if you drop the book or if you bounce the pipette, it will cause that stem to become broken and we'll have those little trapped air bubbles which will give us poor data. Now we're going to have about 33 millimeters with three books. The pressure goes up, the volume goes down. I'm going to call that 25 millimeters. With four books, we'll call that 21 millimeters. And with five books, we'll stop at that point. We'll call it about 19 millimeters. You can place up to about eight books on there. I don't know what the actual bursting strength of the pipette is. Uh, I really don't want to find out and get red food coloring all over the books and, the, and stuff of that type. But I know that we've gone up to about eight books. And obviously, the more points you have, the better your graph. But also, the more points you have, the more graphing you have to do. And students typically don't like graphing. So we've got data that's here. And we've seen our data table as we look at the board here. And then we've also been able to graph that as we go. And even on a very quick graph with no scale here, we can see that we get the very typical Boyle's Law graph, which shows an inverse relationship between the pressures and the volumes. And I think that it is so important to realize that it's the concept that we're after here. And it's that visual process of understanding that when pressure goes up, volume goes down. You can do this with a variety of different types of technology equipment. I've seen it done with other types of materials, but I haven't ever seen anything that was as quick and as easy and is visually accurate for the students to get this picture in their mind. More books, more pressure, less volume. And the common mistake that they're going to make again is they're going to want to measure the length of the liquid in the tube. And you constantly must reinforce the fact that we're studying gases. And so that's the uncolored part of the tube that we're looking at here with the gas law. So you could transfer that information then onto a sheet of graph paper. Students can quickly do that. And within a 45-minute period of time, students are in the lab, collect the data, graphed it. They've drawn conclusions from that information, and then they're able to get this picture of what takes place with Boyle's Law. Tom Russo, I believe, was the person who first came out with this. And this may be a slight variation on what he did with some of his early microscale stuff. And I've never seen a better lab for doing the straight Boyle's Law apparatus than this.